let us talk about pattern matching. So the simplest way to understand pattern matching is uh, if you already are familiar with the switch statement in programming languages such as C, C++, or Java. In a switch statement, so assume this would be a switch statement, what you're doing is you're comparing some value against some other values, right? So rather than, if you recall the function that we wrote, uh, eval built in, we wrote that on homework three, and we had, uh, we were comparing the symbol against a series of possible symbols. So either variable sim against uh, the quote plus, and then the symbol star, symbol minus, symbol slash, we were, would return a function for each one. So the equivalent can be written using a match much more simply um, because match is doing implicitly unequaled. So this would be exactly the same code, would mean exactly the same thing, they're equivalent. So you would write match sim, and then you write the symbols that you want to match against. So if the symbol equals to that, to whatever symbol you wrote, then you return this on the right. There's one thing that you should note is that else now becomes underscore. And the idea is underscore means anything. So you're saying that symbol should compare against anything that always returns true, and therefore you would return what is on the right-hand side. There's one difference uh, if we compare it against cond, which is, as you know, if I were to write uh, something, let me... If I do, if I have a cons and I have um, something that evaluates to false, and I do um, hello world, um, what is the return value of this? So if I call vector 33, as you know, this would return false. So you would not run this. So what is the result of this conditional? As you probably remember, the result is void, right? So if I do define x, um, is this void? It should return true, right? So it is void. So the result of a conditional when nothing is nothing matches is just void. So whether if I were to return number 10, this would return um, 10. No, why not? Ah, yes, exactly. Void is false. So let me print x. So at least. Yes, and x is 10, and 10 is not void, so therefore you get that false. Okay, so this is what I was saying, but if you try to write match in the similar example, uh, what you get is actually an exception. Um, actually, some people in um, homework 4 and homework 5, they would get um, a, vo a void coming out of somewhere. Uh, usually what happened was that they did, they'd have the... They, they were not covering all possible cases, and that's why they were getting that void. But with match, if you actually write your code using match, you would get um, an exception, as I can show you here. Um, you get a match exception saying that none of the branches were met, which personally makes much more sense because it means your code will, will crash louder, which is always what we want when we're developing things. So if we want to recreate the same behavior as before, uh, what we could do is, uh, in the case where we don't know anything, we can just return a void, and then this would not return, the, would not raise that error. So with this behavior, you, you are more flexible. You can do, you can express everything that um, conditional.
thus. So one thing that is way more interesting is let's say you want to write conditional and this is a typical function defined by branches, right? One way is you, you define it and you write a conditional, right? So nothing too surprising here. If I write factorial of three, I get six because it's three times two times one. Um, but if I am, if I were to write this with a match, you can just say if it's zero, return one, otherwise return n times star, which is you know, you avoid doing this equals, which is fewer opportunities for a, a mistake, right? So you're just saying if n is zero, then return one, otherwise return this. If I were to write this, I do version two. I get exactly the same value. Another thing that record allows is the usual slash command. So this is saying, because this is so common to just test the inputs, um, record actually perf allows you to write a short form that performs a match directly on your inputs. So this would be the third version, um, which you could just write three, three. So the difference here is that you have to put the parenthesis. So it has to be a list of things because as you know, uh, the arguments are a list of things, a list of arguments. So you have to put parenthesis and you have to write zero and underscore rather than just one where you're doing a match on one. Here you're doing a match on the list of arguments, right? So that's why you need this parenthesis there. Okay. So you have three ways of writing factorial with conditional, uh, with just a match, and then with define slash match. So another thing that pattern matching allows is for something even more interesting, which is you can write the patterns, the structure of your data type. So for instance, with the list, you can say, I want to match L with the empty list. I want to match L with a list with exactly two elements. Um, I want to match L, right, with the list of exactly two arguments, and I want to say let the first argument, uh, the first element of the list be X, the second element of the list be Y. And a more interesting one is even this one, which is saying I want to take the first element, I want to call it H, and I want to take the rest of the list to be T, and you use the ellipsis to represent that. So if you understand this, and there's the um, annotation here, I would recommend you to pause this video and try to do these exercises by yourself, as it will allow you to understand a bit better. So please pause the video, and hopefully you did that. So now I'm going to show you the solution. Um, so if you pass a list and you pass empty, you will get this false. If you pass a list with one element, you will get this thing, right, where the head is one and the rest of the list is T, which is empty. So therefore, you would get the empty list. In the case where you pass two elements, if it's exactly one and two, then you would get this case. So you get true. But if it's something else, it wouldn't match the first one. It would match the second one. So therefore, you would do the addition. So note that you are these two branches. They're both looking at lists with two elements. But here we're saying specific, specifically which elements they are. And here we're leaving that open. And we're also binding those elements of the list to variables. So as you know, this is creating variable, declaring two variables, x and y. So now we can rewrite map with a match. And let me show you how it looks like. So actually, this is something you can try just by looking at the previous slides. And now that you've learned these three patterns, could you try to come up with rewrite map using the match condition? So try to do that by yourself. Please pause the video and try to answer that yourself. Okay, so hopefully you did um, try to write map using match and you would get something like this. Very succinct, 
you will see that we're matching on L. If the list is empty, you write list, uh, the empty list. If the list has at least one element, you match the first element with age, the second, the rest of the list with T con colon, and the result becomes shorter because you don't have to keep doing first and rest. That is done automatically for you, for you using the pattern matching expression. Another thing you can do is you can use the pound colon when clause. And this is actually quite useful as you will see in the following slides. So what the, the hash colon when allows you to do is add a condition. So call some code additionally to what we have. So let's see what we can do. So let's say we want to write a member, right? And member, as you know, we can implement it with this code where we first check if the list is empty and if the list is empty, then X is not a member of L. Otherwise we check if X is the same as the first element of the list. If that's the case, we return true. Otherwise we check if the, if X, we call recursively, right? With the rest of the list. So let's see how we could write this very succinctly with the pattern matching expression. Um, first case, becomes this. So if the list is empty, we just write empty list and we return false exactly or like we have here. The list has at least one element, right? Um, what we say is we have, we just match H to say the first element and we say underscore, we don't care about the rest of the list. So we see, and then we use the, the when clause to check is X the same as H. So we're comparing a h sorry h with x so the first element of the list with with the x in the parameter of the function and if that's the case then just return true so as you can see this is way shorter um, or more explicit what's going on so the third example uh, assuming you understand the pattern expressions so the the last case is saying i don't care about the head i only care about the rest of the list so you're saying it, there's at least one element there um, and if there's at least one element there, what we do is we take the rest of the list and we call recursively X and T. So it becomes a bit shorter. Um, another thing that um, Racket's pattern matching allows you to do is actually match on the structures, on structs. So you can say, if X is a struct, let's say foo, I want A and B to be those two fields. And you can also use underscore as usual. So in this case, I want to take A and B and I want to add the two fields together. You could do that very easily with this match clause. So you're doing match X. And if X is a structure, then unpack A and B and then add A and B together. So if you were to call F this function and pass foo one, two, you would get the result one plus two. So you'd get three. And now the interesting part. So now you might remember the, K, the code that we had, right? We already optimize the first function eval built in to use the pattern matching expression we, we had before. Now what we can do is we can uh, try to rewrite this code now that we know how to do pattern matching on structures. Let's see how we could rewrite this code to, to take advantage of the match uh, construct. Okay, so how could we write this? One way is we can just do define match. This is just to show you all the, the features combined. And what we could do, now look at the functions, right? This is the, um, the um, this is me trying to write the rules of homework um, two, is it two? Where we are evaluating just built-ins? No, three, I think it's three. So in that homework, we don't have the notation, but let's, but this, this um, formalism actually captures the, um, evaluation of built-in functions, right? So if you have a variable, you evaluate that down to uh, using the built-in and you return that. If it's a number, you return that number. Otherwise, you evaluate the function, the both arguments, and then what you do is the result v is the same as evaluating v of f, which is going to be a function, and you're going to pass two values to it. So how do we represent this with pattern matching you will see that it becomes very close to what the formalism um, the usual formalism we're being using so let's see so as we as i we talked about before 
when we write these three rules, what we're doing is we're doing some kind of pattern matching on the, we are doing pattern matching on the, the input. So we're saying if the input is a number, so we can write that very succinctly, just saying r call a number n, then return n, right? So we return n, exactly. If r call a variable, so if the argument is a variable, then what we do, we call built in and pass x to it. So we're doing exactly that, but just using the record notation of calling a function, right? So then the last thing is this, where we have a function call. So we have apply with EF, right? EF here. And then you have two arguments. So your list, so you notice that we are using nested patterns. So we're saying that this is a structure and inside you have a list with exactly two elements, EA1 and EA2, EA1 and EA2. And what we're doing is we're gonna return the evaluation of our eval. So this is the same as we had before. But now we actually have EF, EA1, and EA2, exactly like we have in the, in the formalism. So in your homework, you're going to be asked to do something uh, pretty much exactly like this. So this slide is a very important one. So the, in summary, pattern matching gives you a way of writing less code uh, with letter with fewer mistakes hopefully because you don't have to keep doing first and last it becomes more explicit what you're saying what you're trying to achieve it becomes more declarative uh, the kind of code you want to write but it does expose your data so if you do pattern matching of structs that means you cannot do you know if you change the struct you will break all the code that is doing a match on your on your data structure so that is something that is um, a non-trivial uh, thing to do just keep that in mind if you have a structure and you you share it as part of your public um, api then you won't be able to change it anytime if your users use match on it um, that's basically what i'm running here so it, it kind of gives you it gives you tighter coupling uh, with respect to your client code um, yeah and in the last few slides um, I'm just explaining how to implement match and I'm going to leave this uh, for you to uh, look up on past um, so fall of 2019 where I explained this you can uh, watch the video if you're interested in how to implement match uh, but this year we're not going to cover that so I hope you have a good one